This is a series about the many data tools we have available in the modern data stack, trying them out and figuring out which one fits best. Our goal will always be the same, extract data using the YouTube APIs to do analysis on the null queries channel statistics. Being the first in the series, we're gonna start at the basics, a good old Python script. Let's start with where it will fit best into the architecture. With Python scripts, they'll be useful just about anywhere. But for today's example, we're gonna run the script locally to pull YouTube data and then analyze that data. We're going to need some libraries to use such as Google API Client, Pickle, Pandas, and Tabulate for analysis. We're starting with the most bare bones architecture. We're not gonna worry about storing the data or the results, just a pull and analyze model. Ideal for one-time data exploration, it's not fancy, but it will be the foundation for this series as we explore increasingly complex data architectures. Over time, I see this being built up into a full analytics platform. So subscribe to follow along with that process and be sure to comment if you have suggestions on where to take it. So while Python needs no introduction, I'm gonna do it anyway. Python is a readable and concise language, which makes it easier to write and maintain code. It's also used widely in the industry, so there's a large community of developers and a wealth of resources available. It has a huge ecosystem of libraries and tools specifically designed for data work. Ones for ETL, data analysis, visualization, and building machine learning models. So it's a solid choice for any data project. We'll be retrieving the data with YouTube's APIs, application programming interfaces. They're a way for different software systems to communicate with each other. They provide a set of rules and protocols for how two systems can exchange information and request services from each other. APIs allow for different systems to integrate and work together, enabling a wide range of functionality and possibilities. So for example, we're gonna be using it to retrieve data from a website. APIs can also be used to automate processes and the movement of data. I'll be going over a bit of the code, but it's going to be very specific for gathering YouTube data. If you want a detailed breakdown of how to write a Python script for YouTube, this video by Corey Schaefer is a great way to learn. But what I wanna focus on is the process of knowing what API to use, how to explore the options and figure out what to do. The first thing to do is authenticate into the YouTube private statistics. So I'll need the script to log into the null queries account. To do this, I needed to create an app on Google Cloud with access to the YouTube APIs for data reporting and analytics. Creating this app will provide a client ID and client secret. Using these credentials, I can use OAuth to provide access to the Null Queries YouTube channel. OAuth 2 is an open standard for authorization that allows users to share their private resources, such as their data or access to certain services, with third-party applications while maintaining the security of their information. It works by allowing the user, in this case myself, to grant access to the resource, Null Queries YouTube channel, to the script without sharing their login credentials. Instead, you get a unique token that allows the application to access resources on their behalf. It's a useful tool for securely sharing resources and allowing access to certain services without compromising security. Anytime you've had a web page pop open and ask if you'd like to log in with Google, Apple, et cetera, that's OAuth in action. So when I run this script, it will ask me to log into YouTube with my null queries account. Google will then give the app a bearer token, which can be passed into the APIs to authenticate access. Additionally, it will give a refresh token, which I'm storing in a pickle file. Bearer tokens have a short lifespan, but the refresh token can get a new bearer token without logging in again. This will allow for a continuously running automated script. So this script is essentially checking to see if the pickle file is there, using that to get credentials, and if that fails, requesting a login to get fresh tokens. Now comes the fun part, documentation. Unsurprisingly, there's a lot of docs for YouTube, but it's not always easy to understand. It's written broadly for different use cases and user needs. We have the YouTube data API, which can get a ton of stuff, getting lists of videos, IDs, channel information. It can be used to upload videos, write descriptions, and all sorts of video interaction. It has a lot of application type uses. Next, we have the reporting API, which provides bulk reports. This is basically raw data dumped for channel stats. We can run this code to get a list of the available report types, and then I'm just converting it to pandas data frame and tabulate for readability. If I want the report, I need to run this section to create a job, which will generate the report daily. And then this will let me know what jobs I have running currently. In this case, I have two, basics and combined. The job will return a URL where I can download the file. So here you can see I'm using the job list to get the ID, which I can then loop through and get the URLs and then put the CSVs locally. 
The documentation goes over each of the reports and what it provides, but I'm a visual person, so it was easiest for me to pull that data and look over it. The next option is the Analytics API. This is more of a query than the raw reports. From here, I can pass in dimensions, metrics, and filters. The documentation has a ton of samples for common things people might want. In my case, I'm getting the daily report of total views, watch time, duration, and so on. So the documentation shows me what I need to pass in, and then I just put that into the code request and it will return the values I want. It took quite a bit of trial and error to figure out what parameters were required, what dimensions don't like to work together, like day and video, which is kind of annoying, and figuring out what exactly I can get from it. But once I had the authorization set up and the basic library set up, it was just a matter of playing around with it and checking the documentation, going back and forth between the code and just trying things out. I think in this case, Analytics API is what I was imagining at the start, being able to pull on-demand data for analysis. And for the analysis, that will come soon. I'll be doing a full video dedicated to just that. So that's an example of using Python for basic data analysis. It's probably the simplest data architecture I could come up with, but knowing the YouTube APIs and having done some data exploration, this will be the foundation for everything else we build on top of it. This is the first in a series where we'll be trying out various data tools, but for now, check out this video on the modern data stack to get an idea of what cool things we'll be reviewing in the future.